Hey everyone, you're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor, keep it between us. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Andrew G and welcome to episode 44 of my podcast, The Public Affair. I'm really happy that we're on 44 episodes of the show. You guys are the greatest for all your support. Of course, thank you to my producer, Mike Hamilton at Rogue Media Network for helping make this podcast super lit. Um, and of course, thank you guys to all my viewers, all my followers, everybody. You guys are the greatest. So thank you again so much. I couldn't be any more thankful. If you're new to the channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. YouTube.com slash The Public Affair is just right there. You know, just click the subscribe button right there. It's nothing. <laughs> Before we get started, I definitely want to give a shout out to a few of our sponsors of the public affair. This episode is brought to you by Arjon Painting with my boy Juan Arjon. He's a family-owned local paint company that specializes in residential homes, both interior and exterior. He offers the best quality guarantee, so if you need your home painted, make sure you call my boy Juan Arjon with Arjon Painting on the number on the screen. Of course, to B&J Refinishing with Frank Baiza, episode out right now. I love me some Frank. He focuses on resurfacing bathtubs, counters, sinks, tiles, and more to original showroom quality, five-year warranty on most work, and has the best prices in town. And Frank doesn't stop there because he also has Co-Town Tint, which is a mobile tint and detailing business, offers the, offers the best high-quality film and products and will be all competitor prices. Frank definitely is a businessman. I love me some Frank. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. Of course, to Boyo Box and Audio with Jeffrey Monreal, who just let me know he got me auto start for my car. I can't wait to install it. He focuses on installation of stereos, door speakers, and audio systems. He also specializes in building custom subwoofer enclosures and much more. He's a jack of all trades, and I love me some Jeffrey. Thank you so much. To David Santabana is the number one sales agent in his office at Alinea Real Estate. To help you buy a home or sell your home, make sure you follow him on Facebook at David with Alinea, or call the number on the screen, darling, for all your real estate needs. Love me some David. Of course, course the four brothers constructions with joe olvera he provides custom home designs and renovations he also focuses on plumbing roofing tree removal electrical work and so much more make sure you call the number on the screen for all those services joe thank you so much for sponsoring this episode and to one of my new sponsors miss kaylin flores with dollhouse aesthetics and beauty kaylin and the girls offer a full service salon with body contouring lashes eyebrows makeup hair and more it's truly a premier beauty salon call the number on the screen or follow them on social media for more info kaylin thank you so much she's also a boss woman love me some Kaylin. I got to talk to her the other day. She also has Elevate here in Waco. They're actually located on Robinson Drive. Um, they're Waco's newest premier shop and they sell nothing but the best. Elevate is proud to bring you all of one of the kind attire and the most exotic merchandise on the market. They have barbecue flavored Doritos, which I so gotta get on. Um, they guarantee all gas and no breaks. Make sure you check them out on Facebook and Instagram for more information. Kaylin, thank you so much for sponsoring. One of my new sponsors. Love you, girl. More to come later. All right, guys, so I'm really excited about this episode. You guys know I like to throw things a little bit different every once in a while. I got to meet this guy on social media some months ago, and he's kind of hinted at me that he wanted to come on the show, and we had to go through all these, like, little things to get him on the show, and um, he even brought his own notebook full of questions for me, I guess, or things that we need to go over. <laughs> I definitely want to welcome uh, Mr. If I get this wrong, you have to correct me, Waco's number one Army recruiter, Sergeant Jose Soto, is that correct? It's a uh, Sergeant First Class. Uh, yeah. Sergeant, Sergeant yeah, First I mean, Class. You can just call Soto. me Soto for short. Can I just call you Jose or, or Soto? Uh, people call me Jose. Just people not Daddy, Soto. right? Uh, <laughs> daddy. Well, thank you for coming on the show. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. How are you feeling about coming on the show? Um, good. Uh, indifferent. I don't know. You seem excited I, over this. Don't don't be acting all shy now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Bring that same energy. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Well, I just you know I just like to do different things on the show, and I, I was like, oh, I haven't had an army recruit or you know anybody who was in the military, so why not Mr. Soto, who follows the public affair? From what I understand, you've watched every episode, and um, you always given your little critique. Um, one of the episodes that I would like to go back and talk about was episode ten when you reached out to me when I had Sid the Barber on here because we spoke briefly about the military, yeah. and you know I just like to do different things. Yeah, well, there's somebody from the army on the show. What's up? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, whenever I saw that show, uh -huh. um, it kind of spoke to me because I, I mean, Sid used to cut my hair a long time ago. Yeah, uh, I think it was like pre-COVID. He cut my hair a couple of times. Yeah, and me and him talked a couple of times as well. Yeah, and that's why I was like. I should ask him if he wants me on the show. Well, I, I will say that Sid did tell me. I think Jose Soto would be really good for the show. Like, and I, you know, Sid never lets me down when it comes to the references. So, you know, every time Sid refers somebody into being like one of my most biggest episodes. So, yeah. shout out to Sid. I love me some Sid. But you know, thank you again for coming on the show again. I like to just switch it up a little bit. And um, we're gonna get to your notebook here in a minute because I want to see what you got written down for me. But before we start, why don't you introduce yourself for people who may not know who you are? Okay. Uh, so I'm one of the recruiters here in Waco, Texas. Man. Um, <laughs> I've been, I've been here for about two and a half, almost, well, almost nine months now. So yeah. two and nine months. Um, okay. I, uh, originally came from Fort Hood. Yeah. Um, so my background. Yeah. I originally joined the army back in 2010. Okay. Um, so I've been in for 10 years. 
Um, the main reason why I joined was because mm-hmm. I went to school and uh, at the end of the school, well, once I finished school, yeah, I uh, accrued a lot of student loans. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, mind you, before I before I even thought about it, yeah, uh, during high school, recruiters would walk into the classroom and I'd be like, "F that, I'm never <laughs> doing that." Oh, yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> um, and I mean, I come from a Hispanic family, like a, I'm yeah. first generation too. So, oh, okay, whenever. Uh, recruiters would walk in my, you know, I'd tell my parents, they'd be like, that's local, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. So I didn't think uh, the army, so you weren't even going to join the army. No, You're just that, like, F that. Like, that was, yeah. that was never like one of my, okay. uh, thoughts that came to mind. So, right. Right. Uh, six months after I graduated from the university that I went to, okay. uh, I got my first bill. And it right. was like way more than I was expecting for it to be. <laughs> um, Do people even pay those though? Do you guys well, pay student loans? So like yeah. I was, I was super naive right. uh, during the time that I was going to school. Uh-huh. And that's part of the reason why I got myself in that predicament. Yeah. But I honestly didn't think I even had to pay that back. That was, that was that naive. But yeah. That's what, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who pays student loans? It's like, it's like your hospital bills. You pay your hospital, but yeah. I don't. Well, see, th- there's a difference <laughs> between hospital bills and student loans though, because Student um. loans, they can garnish, <laughs> they can garnish your wages if okay. you don't pay student loans, and that's what I didn't know. Yeah. So I didn't pay them for like a good year. Okay. Right? Oh, got you. And on the year mark, I went to go pick up my check from the place that I was working at. Yeah. I, I, I mean, everybody looks at their check when they pick it up. Right. You know? I looked at it and that <laughs> my check was missing like four hundred dollars. Oh like, shit! Oh, they were taking from your check. Yeah, they started garnishing oh, my wages. Oh. Yeah. So oh. at that point, I was like, uh, "What do I do?" Yeah. So that same night, I was like. Four hundred dollars a month. Damn, they couldn't call you. Be like, yo, but what about twenty? Well, they did. So they did call me. <laughs> oh, they had been calling me, oh, but I kept on. I kept on. You know, treating it like a side piece. Huh? Yeah. So I kept on just, <laughs> Can't I kept, call me during the day. They, they were sending me letters and everything. <laughs> yeah. I would just tear them up. Not even look at them. Oh wow. Um. So I mean, mind you, I ruined my credit that whole year. Oh, okay. Um. So, the very first thing I did that night was I went on on Google and I typed in how to get rid of student loans because yeah. I thought it was like a. I thought I could get rid of them like super easily. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I couldn't. Uh, nah. So the first, but the first thing that came up was join the military, and I was like, "Well, let me go talk to recruiters." I mean, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So I went to talk to recruiters that ne- the very next day. Right. And uh, the army was the only branch that actually offered the student loan repayment program. Oh, do they? Okay, yeah. got gotcha. you. So um, he said, "We'll pay off your student loans, uh, like entire." Student loans. If you join or you have to be in there for so long? Uh, after three years. After, of service. Okay, three so, years. But I mean, to me, <laughs> three years versus 20 years of paying $400 a month. I mean, yeah. That was. You'll die before you even. Yeah, because you'll, <laughs> exactly. be so, you'll be so stressed so, out from paying it. So You're like, screw on, that. On one of the papers that I actually read uh-huh. before I started tearing them up, um, it said $400. And then the end of it would be like 2032 or something like that. Yeah. Oh, hell no. And I was like, mm-hmm. am I even going to be alive during that time? You know? Um, <laughs> well, so yeah, days, yeah. <laughs> he said three years, he yeah. said three years. And I was like, bet, let's do it. So, okay. so, so um, then that's how you ultimately, yeah. okay. So did you basically join the army basically to get, and we'll, and we'll get, um, further into it here in a second, but you know, m- the majority of the reason was to pay off those student loans that right. were just kicking Initially, your ass. Yeah. yeah. They had you bent over. And so, um, I, <laughs> so you know what I, I kind of want to talk about a little bit uh, before we continue with that booking you on the show uh-huh. I have never had to go through such a process to book somebody on the show so sergeant excuse me first what is it first you can class just call me Soto okay Soto Jose Soto Soto um, you know he we talked about it on the phone he was like oh are you inviting me on the show like, yeah I think it'd be kind of cool whatever and then he said do we have to talk to this guy who he made it very clear was not his boss <laughs> I thought he was I thought you were going to kick my ass over the phone I was like come <laughs> on Soto stop this and so um, so I had to talk to a public affairs guy, which I thought was so appropriate because this is the public affair, right? Yeah. And so um, I was at work when I took the call and, you know, we had to like, it was like, you can't talk about this. Uh, what are you going to talk to him about? And I was like, I mean, the majority of the reason why I'm inviting him on the show is because he's like cute to look at. Like, it's we're not going to talk about anything political like the president or anything, I promise, you know? And I just thought it was so cute that we had to go through like this whole process. And then the guy was like, can I see the episode? I was like, no, <laughs> you can see it when everybody else gets it. Okay, <laughs> listen, nobody runs me on my show yeah, all right? Right, yeah. but he was very nice I think he low-key wanted to be with me I'm not gonna lie mm. what was his name uh nah, we can't say yeah I can't say <laughs> I think you want to sleep with me it's, it's, it's gonna be on YouTube we can't say uh, okay yeah it's definitely gonna be on YouTube sorry about that anyway <laughs> and then um again uh reaching out you reached out to me to be on the show yeah. which is kind of like what I you know a lot of people reach out to me to be on the show right 
a lot of people are interesting. Some people are like, but what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm kind of at this point now where I can't just invite anybody on the show. For you know, sure. like you have to be doing shit. Um, so uh, the we mentioned earlier that the majority of the reason why you wanted to be on the show is because you watched episode 10 mm-hmm. with Sid. Um, was there any misconceptions that you wanted to address on that episode? Because we spoke briefly about the army and I spoke about my experience with the recruiter, which I was in high school. So mind you, okay. The recruiter was cute and he, t- <laughs> he told me that if you join the army you just go overseas and play xbox which i thought was a recruiting tactic for him i uh-huh. thought he thought he was gonna sold me with that you know what yeah. i mean so so what do you have to say about that because it sounds like you wanted to get it off your chest for quite a few months now <laughs> <laughs> so like i said once again thank you for having me of course um, but uh i mean sid sid kept it real um yeah. i mean then numerous times the numerous times that he cut my hair mm-hmm. uh pretty much all we talked about was um you know his experience and what he got out of joining the military yeah um, and that's part of what, like the reason why I wanted to come on. Okay. Um, so a lot of people don't, uh, necessarily think of the benefits that come after you get out. Right. Um, so Sid, I think only did three or four years, but he has greatly benefited from, uh, the military, okay. uh, and the army specifically because, yeah. uh, I'm sure he got the VA loan. I'm sure that he went to barber school for mm-hmm. free. I think he also went somewhere else, um, School wise, uh, with the with the benefits that he got yeah. while he was in, I don't know, but I know Sid's a boss. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so, so, so that's what I'm saying. So Sid's like, a boss. Sid, so <laughs> Sid is the example of what okay. we actually tell some of these kids oh, right okay. now, um, to use the army as a stepping stone to get them where they need to be mm, later on in you. life. Um, a lot of people think of the army like the misconceptions of the army is I'm going to join the army and yeah. I'm going to die, and that's one of the oh. first things that my parents thought about too. Yeah. Um, and I mean, honestly, whenever whenever I told my mom, I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna join the, the army." Yeah, she was like, "Estás pinche loco," and I was like, "No, I'm not." You know? Yeah, yeah. I was like, "I'm trying to, you know, get my student loans paid for." Right. And then on top of that, obviously, I'm gonna get a paycheck. Yeah. I mean, are you gonna pay for the mom? Like, let's be real. Well, I mean, throughout, throughout the entire th- throughout the entire time that I was growing up, yeah, uh, my parents always told me we want you to go to college, but they never they never said we're gonna pay for you to go to college. Right, right. They just want and, you to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being first generation. Um, to me, in my eyes, I was kind of setting the groundwork for all my, you know, cousins, and right. younger cousins, stuff right. like that. And uh, now my parents are like big influencers for myself. Oh, okay. They'll, be, they'll tell my cousins, hey, you should join the army. Yeah. So you don't just go overseas and play Xbox all day. Uh, so me personally, <laughs> I've only been overseas once. Oh, really? Uh, I've, I've been to Afghanistan one okay. time. And then, I mean, if you count Korea and also um, right. Germany. I've okay. Been there too. Uh, there's guys in the office that have never deployed, though. Really? And they've been in for just as long as I have. And they don't play Xbox all day? Like, uh, here's some the thing. Of them, I'm trying to join the army. Play, yeah, like, I'm trying to join the army. Okay. And then I, I want to play PlayStation 5 all day because I can't get my hands on one now. Okay. And then I really think I'm going to meet my man in the army. Like, I couldn't meet him over the border. I couldn't meet him in Mexico. <laughs> so I think if I join the army, right? This It's a whole thing. I thought about it last night. Uh-huh. I think if I join the army and I go overseas to a different country, I don't have to deal with none of the bum losers that live here in America. For sure. I can, I can get me a man in Japan. You know what I mean? Uh, and never come back. What do you think? I don't know about meeting <laughs> a man in Japan. I'm sure they would love a nice army piece so, like, like me. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna front either. I have a lot of, I have a lot of gay friends. Yeah. Um, and Did they the army... Say again? Did they find their man in the army? Uh, well, no. <laughs> but uh, all the people that I have that are friends of mine. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of people. There's a lot of misconception with that too. You okay. Know, that you know, gays are treated differently because right, of whatever right. reason. Mm. Um, and it's not the case. Uh, the army has EO policies, which is equal opportunities. Okay. The army has sharp policies, which is sexual harassment and assault response program. Oh wow. Uh, so f- pretty much anything that you can think of, it's all inclusive for all. Right. Uh, I would think this day and age too, maybe uh, again, like again, I'm not naive to what goes on. Like I really don't like to be political about things like this, but I would think these days now that it's more accepting to be that way, that they would, uh, God, is it, is it horrible to say that maybe they don't get treated as bad these days than they did in the past, you know, like, or if they perceive they got treated in the past, do you know what I mean? Uh, everybody gets treated equally. Everybody gets treated equally. Yeah. Okay. But you just, you can't be no punk in the army, huh? Uh, like because they make you work out and stuff like boot camp, and it's like nah. you got to think of it as you're getting paid to work out. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so it's like a job. Yeah. So don't bitch to do your job. <laughs> That's all it is. And let me tell you something. I'm so go strong now, so I could join the army. Let me tell you, everybody, I could join the army. Yeah. I, and I, I'm, I, I see. I mean, from episode one all the way to now, <laughs> you, see? you can definitely, you can definitely see the difference. Thank you. Though, for sure. I look hotter, right? Uh, you look <laughs> a lot thinner. 
I look hotter. Everybody's in my DMs now, okay? I I can't keep a man, but they're in my DMs. And, you know, I want to talk about the deployment process. Do you get to pick where you get to go, kind of? Or how Um, does that work? So your very first unit, Mm -hmm. they're going to give you the option. Yeah. It's like a wish list. Um, And depending on if the Army needs you in those three places that you put down. The wish list. (laughs) Is that uh, what it's called? Yeah. Are you serious? No. So, like, the three places that you put down, (laughs) they'll be like, hey. Uh, what places do you want to go to? If any of those three that you want to go to mm-hmm. are actually available, yeah, we'll put you there. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, so, where were your three places? Uh, my my three places were Korea, okay, uh, Fort Hood, okay, or Fort Bliss because I was trying to stay in Texas because you have to pick one overseas one, right? And I ended up getting Korea. My oh, very, okay. My very, so my very first year in the yeah. army was in Korea. Were you happy? Uh, no, not really. Why? Because so that's another thing too. Uh, the one thing that I would say that sucks about the army, uh-huh. the only thing that sucks, uh-huh. in my opinion. Is uh, just being away from family. Uh, okay, yeah. so <laughs> no, well, I mean, I'm away from my family now. Anyway, it'd be all right. Yeah. So like that's the only part because like yeah. coming, growing up in a Hispanic household uh, uh, okay. with 20, 30 different cousins, yeah, um, kind of makes it to where you're always wanting to see them. You know, every weekend right. is like a barbecue. Okay, and uh, that's the one thing that I miss the most. Just family. but you could have had your own family in Korea. Could you imagine half Mexican, half Korean so, babies? So I Come actually on. went to Korea. Yeah. with my first daughter. In my baby mama's stomach already. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, oh, so you got to take her with you. No, you can't. Oh. You can't take them with so you. How did that? Her. Oh, wait, wait. So she was here pregnant, correct? And you had to be deployed. Why yeah. couldn't you take her with you? Is it? Do you have to be um, married for that, or? Uh, so the process. Okay. Um, I don't remember specifically the the name of the actual process. Right, but right. The uh, and the, you have to submit a packet basically saying, "Hey, your family's gonna come with me." Right. And then you don't stay in the barracks, which the barracks is basically like a, a apartment for yourself. Okay. Um. You would stay off post, yeah, outside of the actual um, Korean national uh, post, yeah, yeah, and uh, so you live among the populace, um, yeah. But if you bring your family, it's two years instead of one. Mm. And to me, I wanted to come back, so I was like, you know, uh, I'll just, I'll live with, li- I'll live with being alone for one right, year right. versus bringing them. So, w- so were you still in a relationship with her when you went to Korea? I was. Oh, uh, because I was gonna ask a follow up question, but I won't get you in trouble. So. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> did you meet uh, any hot Korean women? Uh, there was a lot of her. Like, I mean, you. I mean, yes. Yes. But, uh, I mean, you. I there's a lot that. of. Di- I don't care. There's a lot of diversity. I yeah. actually met like a bunch of Mexicans over there. Did you really uh, in Korea? Yeah. Wow. Like, uh, what it was, they were there for, as, as teachers. Oh, Spanish. really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know, I think about my wish list now, and I think a lot of people always put, like, exotic locations. Uh-huh. Like, I don't know if I would want to go to Hawaii because our Hawaii is really expensive. Like, everything that you buy there is very expensive because so it has to be imported. It is, it is expensive, but yeah. if you do end up going to, to Hawaii, uh-huh. we get a thing called cola, which is um, basically uh, pays the difference for... Um, like what it costs here versus the over there. cost of living, yeah. Oh, okay, got yeah. you. No, but still, like that's what it, that's what it, that's what it is. Cost of living yeah. allowance. I would definitely want to go to Japan, Korea, somewhere like Spain. Spain's not an option. Germany, uh, Italy is an option. Ita- Ooh, Italy, yeah. You have to jump. You have to jump out of planes for that one, though. Oh, do you really? Yeah. I don't know about all that. <laughs> I just want to meet my man yeah. over there so he can I'm, feed me I'm pasta. The, I'm the same way. I, yeah. I would, I jump out of planes. Wait, so, what was it like when you first joined though? Like, what was your experience? Like, were, were you scared? Because you know, you said that there's a lot of misconceptions, okay? Mm-hmm. And then I think a lot of people are nervous about being deployed, and then a lot of families are nervous because their their family members might pass away, which you know there there has that has been the case, yeah. unfortunately, for some people. And is that just something that you sign up for, or like what what was your your mind thought when you were like, okay, I'm doing this for real? Um, I mean, t- I don't know. I guess to me, it, it, getting my student loans right. paid for was was worth it. Um, <laughs> and initially, when I joined, uh, it was kind of tapering down. Like okay, the, like the big war was kind of tapering down, but I, I was still expected to right. You know, go over there. Yeah. Um, you don't necessarily know. It's kind of like a crapshoot. Like okay, it, it all depends on what unit you're assigned to. Right. So if you're assigned to a certain unit that is deploying soon, yeah. then you're going to deploy with that unit. Yeah. But you don't know if that unit's deploying or not. Um, so it's kind of like a crapshoot. But uh, initially, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's that, um, there's, that you know, there's nervousness yeah. with everything. Right. Uh, cause Especially at the getting end, deployed. At the end of the day, you're, mm-hmm. you're basically going from, uh, you're stepping into the unknown. Right. Um, but now, I mean, 10 years later, I wouldn't take anything back really at all. Yeah. Okay. So you were in there for 10 years and now you're just recruiting. Is uh, that no. what's going so on? Okay. Re- recruiting is a DA selected, uh, position. So, yeah. well, there's two different, you can, you can drop a volunteer packet and right. say, 
I want until I want to volunteer to recruit. Yeah. Or you can get DA selected, which is Department of the Army selected. Oh, okay. Um, and it's kind of like if you get DA selected, you're kind of voluntold. Uh, I was DA selected. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as long as you meet certain criteria, you get selected, and then you come out at, to a certain okay. community of your choice. Not not your choice, more right. But uh, you do it for three years. Yeah. At the end of those three years, you go back to regular army. I got you. Can we talk about combat? I kind of want to know like where your mind is at when that's happening. Have you ever okay. been in combat? Um. So I'm I'm in a, I'm a support MOS. Uh, what that, that means mean? is I'm a I support the combat people. Like medics, kind of. Um, the people that like. Well, they're they're support as well. But okay, I'm more of a logistical support. Um. So like, all I did when I was in Afghanistan yeah. was I was in charge of a class one yard, which is. Uh, ordering food, receiving food. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I want that job. <laughs> Come here, boys. <laughs> so ordering food and then dispersing it as well. Yeah. Um, oh, hell yeah. So I was more order. I, mean, I was ordering upwards of like a million dollars worth of food at a time. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. But now, is it per their request though, or are they like, well, I want McDonald's and then I want Burger King, uh, or no, is it like, no, we're getting not, Salisbury steak, like we're getting hungry man. It's not it's like, like that at all. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, so like, you just got have to make sure that you maintain the amount of food that you need. Yeah. Um. So every. Every month, I would get like a log of how many people were were on post. Yeah, and we would look at the numbers to see how many people were actually coming through. The okay. Line. Um. Every Friday, though, for sure, it was steak and lobster, though. Mm, for real? Yeah. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, every Friday. <laughs> well, you lived it, so and it's unlimited too. So. <gasps> yeah. How do you not gain weight? Uh, well, I guess Afghanistan is hot as fuck. Like, uh, <laughs> it, it's. It's comparable to Texas, right. though. So, but you've never been in, like, real live action combat? Like, I mean... No. Like, where you had to, like, kind of shoot somebody? Um, no, I didn't shoot anybody, okay. but I was Shot in, at. in some stuff at, yeah. Yeah, no, okay, you know, and I know you probably either don't want to talk about it, because I have a friend, shout out to Manny, um, who was in the Army as well. And um, I, I, not to put his business out there, but he he went through some things, too, mm -hmm. that kind of, like, messed him up mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's, like, he's really normal. You know what I mean? Like, he's he's cool. Like, we could, like, you would never know unless he told you. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, he's cool as F. But I always want, like, he's talked a little bit about the combat and stuff like that. And, like, you know, like, like what are they called? Mortars or bombs? Mortars, or yeah. mor Mortars. Okay. And, like, how one day he was on the phone with his wife, and then all of a sudden it's this plane, that, and you know? And then, and then, you know, they have to, like, take cover or whatever the case uh -huh. is. And then if you're being shot at, you shot. Like, I always just wondered what is, because I'm pussy, right? Like, so I can't, I can't, I can't be in combat. There's uh -huh. just no way. I need to be what you were doing, like the support. Like, mm -hmm. come on, boys, steak and lobster. Let's, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I always wonder what went through somebody's mind when that was happening. You know what I mean? And I know that it's very, probably a touchy subject for a lot of people, too, that mm -hmm. deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah. But um, it, it's just sh big ups to everybody who is brave enough to do that. Because I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be in the corner like this. Let me know when y'all done because I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh -huh. and I mean, I, I, hopefully, I don't sound too, um, what's the word, uh, dark. Okay. Um, Get if, everybody depressed and shit. If, you're, if, if, if it's your time, it's your time. You know? Oh wow. Um, that's kind of how I looked at it. That that because if not, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna be like okay. super anxious. Do they do they train you for stuff like that though? Like to be in combat uh, or so during basic training, you do go some through some stuff like that. Like okay. Through, through training. Is it like virtual reality? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, like, 2021. I thought we were. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So no, you you go through. Um, I forgot what the actual name of it, but uh -huh. you go through a night where, like, people you they're shooting over your head and you're having to ro low crawl. I think it's like 100 meters. Oh, wow. Uh, you throw a grenade, and uh, then that way you get the experience. Yeah, I'd that. be the main one over there fucking up. Like, <laughs> okay, like, <laughs> but there were some, there were some, there were some, there were some of my, my actual, some of my, uh, my yeah. peers. Um, they didn't know how to throw. Okay. Like, period. And they were like, there was one guy that he went to throw it, and he it went back this way. Yeah. And uh, it fell inside the actual <gasps> little box. Oh, and my gosh. The uh, the drill sergeant had to quickly grab it and throw it. Yeah, and, what's uh, the what's the time frame for it to detonate? I think it's like five. Oh hell no! I would've been shitting my pants. No. Five to ten seconds. Yeah. Oh hell no! But yeah, so he grabbed it, chunked it, and there's like little peepholes that you can look through uh -huh. to see what's going on. Yeah. And I just so happened to be in the peephole, and I saw that he that happened. I was like, oh shit! Oh yeah. yeah. Could you imagine how much trouble that guy would have been in if it would have detonated right there? <laughs> like, well, he probably wouldn't have survived it. Yeah. Oh, well, no. I mean, that was stupid, Andrew. God damn it. <laughs> you know, we play Call of Duty, and they, they put you in a gulag when you die. Uh, is there such thing as a gulag? No. no okay, no, that's no. just for the game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's just no. gave me nightmares. No, I mean, I'm not going to lie. The, yeah. the army trains you. <laughs> right. 
You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? That shit was scary. I was like shitting my pants when I was in the glue. I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Yeah. He said, is there a glue on yeah. in real life? <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm no. sorry. So, I mean, the, the army trains you and gets you to that point where you know what to do in certain situations. Yeah, so. yeah. I would die. Like, <laughs> like it was just scary. Yeah. It was like a locker or whatever. Okay. Uh, I think that's very, you know, big ups to everybody who ever wants to join the military. I always thought, like, it would be cool. A lot of people say I wouldn't be able to make it, right? But everybody thinks I'm, well, I am kind of pussy, but I'm not that pussy, right? And so I could totally do it. Like, I ain't no bitch either. Like, I don't cry. I cry at SoCo on my own time. You know what I mean? When yeah. it comes to the basic training and You're stuff. You're talking about, like, uh, during the time that you're working out? Or? Yes. Oh, really? Sometimes Dominic, shout out to Dominic. Like, I really want to sit there and fucking cry because it's so hard. But <laughs> I really think that um, I can survive the basic training and such. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not that hard. They uh, <laughs> Recently, they, uh, yeah. they changed up the how, tra- how basic training is yeah. actually done now. Okay. Um, so the, the reason why they changed it is because they want to yeah. be more comparable to how we are. So, like, okay. I mean, I build friendships with the people that I put in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, to the point where, I mean, like I, t- I, I say this all the time on Instagram. Yeah. Everybody that I put in gets treated like family. Okay, um, got you. So, like, if they were to go somewhere else, oh, my family. Yeah. If they were to go to a recruiting station, for example, in uh, in Fort Worth. Yeah. I would expect that recruiter to treat my cousins okay. brother the same way I'm treating people right, here right. in Waco, you know? And I want um, everybody to know, too, I knew that there was no such thing as a gulag. I just wanted to throw you off. Okay? <laughs> I don't want everybody to think I'm some fucking idiot. Like, I knew that they don't throw you in a gulag and whoever survives goes back out in combat. Like, it's just in the game. Okay. I don't want everybody attacking me later. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, real life is definitely not the same. As, no, of uh, course not. That's Call of Duty. Uh, yeah. Of Duty, <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. Uh, you know, what are some of your recruiting tactics when you are recruiting people to be in the military? Because I see that you're very big on TikTok, which I do not have. And everybody says that I should get TikTok and I don't want to because I'm like one of those people that when something's popping it turns me off do uh-huh. you know what i mean yeah. like oh that's what everybody's doing i don't want to do that like i know that sounds really stupid but um, yeah i just wanted to i actually started tiktok almost a year ago okay uh the only reason i started it was because i wanted to be uh be on the same platform that some of the kids were yeah because if not you're gonna be so i mean the army the, the army recruiting <laughs> is big on phone calls yeah um and nine times out of ten phone calls don't work okay uh, mainly because one of the some of the reasons are you know, if I call a number, it's nine times out of ten going to be the parents' number. Oh yeah. Um, and then the parents answer right away, like, "No, we're not doing that." Yeah, the mom, like, yeah. Usually, I mean, here in Waco, it's especially yeah. like the parents. Will like, be like, my son's not going to do that. Oh, well, yeah. in Spanish, but yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, they'll be like, "No, my my son's not interested yeah. in Spanish." Yeah. Um, you can say it in Spanish. We have a lot of Spanish viewers. I want to do a whole episode that's Spanish speaking one day. I do. I mean, I, I'm down. You um, down? Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, not, like nine times out of ten, it's the parents. Okay. Or okay. They won't answer. Right. Or so how how would you attract me to be in the military? Like if I'm if I'm jobless and I don't have the public affair anymore, right? Because okay. yeah, and so I'm just like, damn, I really get. First of all, what's the age cutoff? Thirty four. Okay, I'm see, I'm a young twenty nine. So okay. um, if I'm just sitting there like, damn, I have no job, the public affair failed. What should I do now? And how do I look at you on social media and say, okay, I'm gonna be in the army now or the military, whatever? Uh, so I mean, for the most part, my bread and butter is just talking to people okay. face to face. Yeah. Um, he said bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> I got. Yeah, I just had I mean, ideas. <laughs> the, the TikTok and the the stuff that I post on Instagram is just uh-huh. to keep you interested in and possibly you know it's just to let people know that I'm a regular human being. Yeah, just like everybody else. I'm okay, not, you know I'm not a robot that's run by the army. Yeah. Um, but I mean, talking to you firsthand, I'd be like, hey, what what are you doing right now? Yeah. And then you tell me, hey, well, I'm jobless, and I'd be like, oh, really? Well, okay. The okay. Can, the army can start you off at right. You know, seventeen hundred a month plus right. an apartment plus food plus healthcare plus dental plus right all the stuff that's free you know i have a question i have a family member who was i believe in the army i don't want to put his business out there because i love him Mm -hmm. but i think you can get discharged right there's honorably discharged and dishonorably discharged i don't think that he are you why are you writing shit down was that one of the things (laughs) nobody's anyway (laughs) so he um it doesn't look like he's benefiting from the army because okay, so yeah. That, so I would like to like uh, what what happens there? Like how okay. do you how do you get kicked out of the army and they're just like fuck you leave? So like, um, they're not necessarily f you leave. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, the army is all about rebuild. T- like let's just say for example, you decide you want to go smoke weed. Okay, right. The army will rehabilitate you to mm-hmm. not smoking weed. Okay, and then they'll kick you out. Now, oh, okay. With, with that being said, uh, from day one. You already know you're not supposed to be smoking, right? Um, so it's kind of like a unwritten rule that you, obviously you don't supposed to, you're not supposed to smoke. Yeah. So when they do rehabilitate you, um, nine times out of ten you're gonna get your benefits 
taken away. Oh wow, um, that's not even worth it. Like, but but I mean, I want my you, cola. Like, if <laughs> you're if you're doing bad stuff, yeah, you can't expect good, good things. Yeah, good, yes, you know? absolutely, I agree with um, you. So like, yeah. there's there's a lot of people that are like, you know, F the army, F the right. military, and they've been in right, right. And they get out and they're like, man, F the army, F this. But nine times out of ten, those were the people that were doing something they weren't something supposed they had to. no business doing. Yeah. Okay, and got you. So they get kicked out, and now yeah. they're kind of like mad that, you know, they got their benefits. Well, well, those are just people that don't take accountability for their actions. There's sure. lots of people that in this world that are like that, and I've had my uh, you know fair share of experiences. There's a lot of people actually. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and it's so unfortunate because like you act like it's everybody else's fault that you couldn't get ahead in life, and I feel like joining the military, especially for somebody who was troubled, mm -hmm. that they if they're if what they're say, if what you're saying is true and they're providing you a way out yeah. and they're giving you the resources to be out why you fuck that up yeah like, I, don't, I don't understand that like I'm not, saying, I'm not saying specifically here in Waco but I yeah. mean, as of lately uh I see the news I mean I, I'm I'm I follow the news yeah there's shootings all the time here in Waco I mean I'm from Arlington which isn't right. any any different but okay um you know the 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 gang violence the the gun violence yeah the drugs all that stuff I mean if I can get you out of here right and help you out you know, why not take advantage why, of Why you can't, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, it's, I don't know. Anyway, but I have a brother who, um, well, my only brother went to, what is it, Gary Job Corps? Is that is that kind of like military-ish? Or it's like a boarding school? I don't know what it is. I don't like, know. It's school that you go to when you can't go to regular school or when you drop out of regular school so they put you on Job Corps to learn a trade. Like, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. So he got kicked out of Job Corps when we were teenagers. I was a senior in high school at the time. Mm -hmm. And they said because he was selling cigarettes. Like, why were you selling <laughs> cigarettes, you idiot? What were they, two for a dollar? Like, <laughs> who does that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and then met his wife who... And then he met his wife. Uh -oh. <laughs> I almost let the kids watch the show. And so I don't know why they watch the show, but they watch the show. I love my niece and nephew. But, uh, you know, like I don't understand when people do that. Like, if I was in the Army, I wouldn't F – I see the benefits that some people get. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I see, I see like, how some of them, they become comfortable. Oh, uh, let me rephrase that. Go ahead. Oh, that's me right there. Uh, okay, so yeah. would you say that you're comfortable now because of the benefits of the Army? Uh, but what, like, because I was gonna say, what about the people? Like, yeah, now the army's paying for you to live in a home. But what about the long term repercussions of like PTSD and stuff like that? Um, so I mean, I think that has a lot to do with how mentally strong you are, too. Okay. Um, if you're not mentally strong, then yeah, I mean that that stuff's gonna. Happen. I mean, I have like relapses every now and then too. Okay. Where do you, uh, do you suffer from that? Can I ask? Uh, or not suffer, but have I, you experienced? I have like slight PTSD. Slight PTSD. It's not okay. Like, it's not like debilitating or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, like I can function for perfectly fine. Right. Um, I have. I mean, everybody has days. Like, but I mean, to be completely honest, you can get PTSD from anything. Yeah, like true. You can get into a wreck outside, and yeah. you can get PTSD from that. Yes, you can. Um, so I mean, I would say, I would say that the benefits that I've gained from being in for this long, okay, uh, outweigh anything else. Really? Yeah. So should I join the army? Is what you're saying? Uh, do you recruit I, just for the army? Just or, for the army. Yeah. Okay, so like, so like, is there? I guess there's recruiters for like the Marines and the Air Force and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the army is the best branch though. So is it? Oh. Yeah. Listen, don't don't please don't get me beat up on my show. It is. <laughs> so, I, I mean, think the, all military the are army, hot. So the army is the only branch that'll let <laughs> yeah. you pick your job. Okay. Uh, the army is the only branch that has the fastest promotions that we do. Yeah. And then the army is also the branch that has. As many duty stations. As Listen, if the army is going to send me to Japan where I can meet my man, I'm in. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> I can't and promise I, you that. No, and, yeah, well, if you're not going to promise me that, then I'm out. Okay, okay? I want fine. I want to live next to the Pokemon Center in Japan, and I want my man to be there's, working there. There's a thing. There's there is a thing. I swear really? to God. Yeah, there's a whole there's a whole Pokemon Center store. It's all Pokemon. You know, I'm a Pokemon whore. I love it. I kind of want to get into your notebook here because you have a notebook of lots of shit written down. I'm kind of like I've been trying to decipher it while we've been sitting here talking. I, you're not gonna be able to read I, it. I can't read it. I want you to tell me what you wanted to talk to me about it's, in it's that notebook. Chicken scratch. Yeah, uh, go I ahead mean, and go over it. I can read my chicken scratch. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> so the the pay. Uh, okay. Some of the people. Some of the people. You're talking uh, about the pay for the army. The pay for the army. Okay. Go ahead. Um. A lot of people will look at the pay chart. So the pay chart is actually DOD wide. Yeah. So all the Department of the Army and the other branches right. go off the same pay chart. Um, for some reason, some people think that the Air Force gets paid more. Okay. I don't know why. I just feel like you're reading all the branches for filth on my show. <laughs> and if somebody comes and beats me up, I'm going to kick your they, ass they, with they it. They can come talk to me. Okay. <laughs> Listen, because I have enough people so, that want to fuck me up already. Okay. Well, so. I'm the same way. Like back like a year ago, a year yeah. ago, right? So like I keep it real, right? Oh uh, yeah, and I can tell. Some people don't like it that I keep it real with no. them. Uh, <laughs> like if I tell them, hey, you're going down the wrong path. Okay. And, you know, th there was a kid in, 
I don't know how much time we have, but there was a no, kid. No, we got all the time in the world. Good. <laughs> there was a there was a kid in uh, university that was. I mean, that's one of my schools. Yeah. Um, and I, he was just going down the wrong path, and I told him, I was like, look, he was first generation from Mexico as well. Yeah. His parents didn't even speak English. Right. And I told him, I was like, you're doing like you're going down the wrong path. I was like, do you really think that your parents, um, want you to be doing? This messed up stuff. Yeah. I, I use other words, obviously. Right, right. But um, you could say what you, you know, this is an unfiltered show. Yeah, but. And I we already got past public affairs. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But um, so, oh, yeah. because I mean, you're I, in uniform. Okay. Sorry. I, t- I told him, I was like, hey, you know, would, what, what would your parents think? Yeah. You, what, you know, the, the things that you're doing. Right. And he kind of just had like a, like a light bulb moment. And I'm like, okay. I was like, think about all the sacrifices that your parents have gone through to right. get you where you're at. Right. And, uh. He ended up graduating, but he wasn't. And when I talked to him, he wasn't graduating. Okay. And then after that talk, I'm not saying that it was because of me, but right. he definitely graduated. After oh, that. good. Okay. And when I went to the graduation, it was it was during, uh, right, like the actual coronavirus stuff. Okay. Uh, they didn't let me in, but I saw him walking in because mm-hmm. I was passing out the the satchels for the 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 students that actually enlisted. Right. He walks up and he's like, "I graduated." And I was like, uh, "Congrats, man!" Yeah. You know, I bet uh, you were very proud of him. I was. I yeah. mean, I had, I had been talking to him since he was a junior, but right, right. You know, um, and, and you know, we we can you could sit here for days. Like me, uh, to me, I feel like don't you think all the branches serve a common purpose, which is to defend the country? So there's really not one better than the other. Would you say? I or? like I like how you're trying to like. <laughs> no, I just try not to get my ass kicked. <laughs> okay, so I have family so, yes. members that were in the army. I have family members that were in the marines. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a family member who I believe is in the air force. He's in Japan. That mm-hmm. uh, air force. Okay, I don't know. Um, so I, I just feel like to say me personally, to say one branch is better than the other when you guys are all serving a common purpose. No, for, no, for sure. You yeah. know what I mean? No, but but, but get, you're saying your like point. benefits wise or just in general um, or like, not, not, uh, what so do you we, mean? All the branches offer the same benefits. You're going to get okay. the same benefits, whatever branch you go to. Right. Um, but up front, like I would, like I was saying earlier, like how you get to pick your job. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about you, but like before I sign a contract, I would, I like to know what I'm doing, you know? And on the other branches, they don't necessarily get a say. Yeah. Okay, I got you. No, but you were talking about the pay. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So the pay. Yeah. Um, How much am I getting paid? A lot of people think that (laughs) when they see that number, they're like, well, I get paid way more than that. Yeah. On the civilian side. Right. Um, What they don't take account into or what they don't take into account, excuse me, (laughs) is the the free stuff that we get. Oh, okay. So like dental, I had like my wisdom teeth removed. Right. That's like two grand right there. (laughs) Um, I know. I've had a bunch of work done on my teeth. Okay. That can I get Botox? Uh, no. <laughs> well, actually, maybe. Actually, yeah, because I'm trying to look like Joan Rivers when I'm 70. You know what okay. I mean? You know the comedian Joan Rivers? Uh-huh. That's what I want to look like. I don't want any wrinkles. Okay. Shout out to Doctor Ton, Nick Ton. So I don't know. I don't know about <laughs> the that, but I okay. I do know of some situations where yeah, if you feel um sensitive about right, your right. body. Yeah. Then I'm gonna say to you. defend my country properly, I need um, Botox and a Brazilian ass lift. And then, and then I can go out there and really give you guys 110%. But with this flat ass, you know, I don't want every, I don't want the, uh, the opposition yeah. to see me looking less than, you know what I mean? Yeah. I got to make sure I look cute. Cause I can be like the seductive spy. Like that's what you guys are not understanding. Gotcha. If I get the Brazilian butt lift and Botox, mm-hmm. I can be the one that goes in there and like, you know, um, the decoy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like in that show to catch a predator, I can be the, <laughs> no, yeah. Right. I can be the decoy and go to like the, the general of the, uh, the um, you know, opposing country or whatever. And mm-hmm. then like really seduce them. If I sleep with them, that's my business. So okay. mind your business. And then you, y'all do whatever you want after that. If you saw him asleep. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Right? <laughs> I just need my Brazilian ass lift first. Okay. <laughs> and my Botox. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the pay. Yeah. Um, and then the. I love that you have a notebook. The, the experiences. So, like. <laughs> okay. Uh, everybody's going to uh, everybody's gonna have a different experience. Right, right. Um, so, like, myself, I'm logistics. There's a guy in the office that's in the medical field. Okay. Um, a lot of his experience that he's uh, gained while in. Yeah. Is transferable to the civilian side to where oh. like you could i mean you could be like a nursing student right yeah and there's gonna be like six or seven months maybe even longer okay got you that you have to do like hands-on right 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 well the not only will the army pay for you to go to nursing school uh-huh but you're knocking out your hands-on training right during that same time right so like a lot of people don't see the benefit of actually joining until after right and uh that's kind of like the message that we're trying to get out 
I kind of want to give a shout out um, to my cousin's husband, Rashawn. And Rashawn, please don't kill me. Was he in the Marines? I think he was in the Marines. Uh, if he, if I, you weren't in the Marines, I'm sorry. I just I, he was in the military. And um, you, you know, you talk a lot about the long term benefits of being in the military. And he helped put my cousin Cindy through nursing school. And they have a beautiful family with a big giant mansion in Long Island. And I love them both to death. So I really just wanted to use this opportunity to give a shout out to Rashawn, who's in the uh, Marines. I don't want him fucking me up because you know what? <laughs> yeah, no, but no. But I, I noticed the the benefits of being in the military. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the benefits for me is because now I know what job I want to do when I go in the army now, okay? Mm-hmm. I want to be the decoy and I want my Brazilian ass lift. And that's gotcha. it, okay? Yeah. Can they do that for me? Uh, because sometimes you guys need like, maybe, like maybe, maybe not. Yeah, like the low key undercovers, right? To kind of go in there and spy. Like, yeah, but those dudes are like super badass. Like, but I am badass. What are you I, talking about? I can't. I mean, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm a badass. Like, I'm gangsters F. Like, I, I was, stop this. Okay. <laughs> you're doing like Abby where you're reading me on my own show. And I don't, you know, I don't appreciate everybody doing that these days. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's, that's something, that's something yeah. that I have to do like on a regular basis. Uh, yeah. Um, is read everybody? Read. Well, I mean, just to kind of like find the angle. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm not necessarily reading it, I got but you. that's just my. Yeah. I have to say, uh, Sergeant First Class Soto was very aggressive over the phone. And I I thought, again, I was like, listen, who are you talking to? I thought we were going to have a whole fight. Like, I thought I was gonna have to go to your house and, and like swing on you. Now I was gonna lose because I always say that I can lose a fight no matter what. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, I really that's what I want to do. What else you got for me here? Um, and then the last thing I had. On okay. Me, I mean, we've already kind of covered everything else. Yeah. But the some people, a lot of people, think of the army as a, or any branch as the right. last option versus mm. using it as the first option. So okay. hindsight 2020, if I could go back in time, back to 2016, right. When I first started going to college, I would have joined the army. Right. Um, main reason being, it would have set me up way better than I am now. Yeah. I mean, I've already bought a house. Right. Um, I mean, I'm driving a, a 2021 truck. <laughs> <Darling>. um, <laughs> Keep going. I, I have a lot of things that <laughs> I'm going for my. <laughs> Sorry, that, <you're> <laughs> Yeah. That uh, I wouldn't have if I wouldn't join the army. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I got you. Uh, I, I would just say, like, if you're actually thinking about it. Don't make it the last option. You make it right. your first option. Right. Well, and then that that's your position here on the show is to recruit people. Well, not I really just wanted you on the show because I thought it'd be interesting. <laughs> you know, your sure. objective obviously is to go ahead and recruit people to be on in the army. Yeah. And so do you normally target like young kids or do you target people like my age or how, what I'll, is your main target? I'll talk to anybody. Oh, really? Yeah. So okay. I mean, I, like I, I, if you, I'll go through the drive through like at Chick-fil-A, for example, Damn. and I'll be like, do you like working here? Yeah. I'll be like, oh, not really. Why not? <laughs> not Chick Fil A. You're talking about McDonald's. Everybody no. loves to work at Chick Fil A. Uh, I I, met, I put somebody in from Chick Fil A. Really? Dead ass. Okay. Yeah. Oh, dead ass. That's yeah. the now. Now we're not dead. being formal no more. Well, I mean, it's, not really, it's not really a customer. If you want to take your army uniform off on the show, you really can. So that way you can be more formal, okay, um, or less formal. But yeah, so like I'll, I'll drive. <laughs> I'll drive through. Like, I love I'll, you're just going I, around. I go. I go through drive throughs. Right? Focus. Yeah. And uh, I'll be like, do you like working here? And nine times out of ten, right, right, it'll be you know. I got you. between the ages of 18 and yeah. 30 yeah i'll be like no i don't like working here and i'll start okay. asking them more questions right. more questions to try to plug the army into right right that's right how, that's how i get people okay cool so um you know but before we go i really want to go ahead and just like you d- probably can't share a lot of this right okay. but this is just my um ooh, what's that word that i'm looking for my conspiracy theory self okay. right um is there a lot of things that you guys are classified to like have you ever seen an alien uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a big conspiracy theorist. So oh, really? Like, yeah. Okay. So, but no, I've never seen it. But have you been to Area 51? Never. Really? No. I mean, that, those, <laughs> are, those are those are goals right there. Though. Yeah, but yeah. what does it take to get in there? Like, what, who works there, and what's it, like? I don't understand. I, yeah, I don't know. You don't know. I, I mean, I or the, did they tell the, you you don't the, know? The, the, the <laughs> amount of secrecy that I know is yeah. Um, or the, the like the level of secrecy that I'm at is just I have a secret clearance and that's it. Okay, got you. So you can't share any of that juicy stuff. Oh, I'm saying I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay, outside of trying to recruit people for the army yeah. and all this, what is what does Jose Soto do outside of that? Like, what what are you into? You know what I mean? Um, because surely you're not spending twenty four seven recruiting for the army. Like, no. Surely you like to go and ha- you're single, correct? Yeah. yeah. Surely you like to go out there and have fun. Like, so what what things interest you? Uh, I mean, my weekends are usually pretty packed of doing stuff uh, so every other weekend obviously i have my daughter yeah and then uh the weekends that i don't have them mm-hmm. um right so right now i'm in the process of actually moving not moving but like i got selected for a different position it's right called, right it's called a warrant officer position right um so here coming up in june i'll be going to the school for that yeah uh so i've been i have this big old thick book that i've been studying okay got you 
Yeah. Nice thick book, huh? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, sorry, uh, Soto, I'm really happy that you came on the show. Am I missing anything here? Or? No. Well, how was your experience on the public affair? Um, it was what I expected. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. And tell your public affairs person to totally hit me up when he's <laughs> when he's ready, okay? Okay. He sounded hot over the phone. I just what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. Well, Soto, Sergeant Soto, Jose Soto, thank you so much for coming on to the public affair. Thank I really you. appreciate your time and enlightening us about the Army and its benefits and the military. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to be a part of the Army myself and be the decoy. For sure. And the, and the spy for I everything. Make sure you get my Brazilian ass lift. Make sure you I get my you. face lift. Okay? Everything. I'm, I'm down for everything. I got you. <laughs> to everybody who watched this episode, thank you again so much for all your support before we go i definitely want to give a shout out to a few more of our sponsors of the public affair this episode is also brought to you by elite barbershop with my boy sid rodriguez he's located on hewitt drive you can download the cut app or call the number on the screen to book he also has marcus guerrero chris reyes and santos cordova over there making you look all cute i love those guys thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair of course the fat boy michelada and botana with my boy junior banda he provides the best micheladas and botana plates for yourself or for a party locally operated make sure you get the best not the rest darling i've I actually rolled around in a botana tray this past weekend super delicious i love it love it love it thank you so much junior of course to inspire roofing and home improvement by joe olvera he focuses on commercial and residential roofing also 25 year and 30 year shingle roofs and all exterior needs make sure you call the number on the screen if you need my boy joe to do any of that work definitely to soko soccer academy with dominic gutierrez and ariana gutierrez located on franklin drive they offer team small group and individual skill training they also have open play on friday nights and specialize in soccer training and fitness training with dominic gutierrez isaac and london carrillo i'm gonna be going over the later workout i missed this morning but i'm gonna go this evening thank you guys so much and of course to another one of my new sponsors Gaito Grillers by Waco Scarface they provide delicious carne seca on both spicy lemon pepper and regular lemon pepper you can catch them at local events and occasional Sundays in front of the flea market here in Waco make sure you follow them on social media at Gaito Grillers for locations to get your scrumptious carne asada thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair thank you guys again so much for all your support make sure you subscribe to this page uh, youtube.com slash The Public Affair make sure you follow me on Instagram and Facebook at The Public Affair again thank you to Sergeant First Class so I said that right right yep, i'm trying to right. say it right okay <laughs> shout out to you thank you so much for coming on thank to the you. show and um, providing something different i really appreciate it and thank you for watching the show too for i really sure. I, i'm very grateful um again thank you all i love you so much and don't forget darling to always keep it between us this has been a rogue media podcast <laughs>